Counting the cost. What does it mean to count the cost as a follower of Jesus Christ? That is the question in today's video. But before we continue, please click like, subscribe, smash that notification bell so that you get the latest videos from this channel as they are uploaded. And this video is timestamped, so please check that out in the description below. So what does it mean to count the cost? That's the question. In Luke chapter 14, Jesus lays out the terms of discipleship for all of us believers. Now, in this chapter, there were massive crowds of people who were following after Jesus. He was performing miracles, and they loved the miracles. He was healing people, and the people loved that. And he was feeding them. He was giving them free food, and the people especially loved that. So who wouldn't love miracles, healings, and a free meal? Of course, everybody would love that. Now, Jesus, because of this, he was the cool guy. He was the cool kid. He was the popular one on the playground. He was the talk of the town, the latest trend, and most definitely the latest fad. But he knew their hearts. He knew that they desired the benefits of what he was doing for them rather than having an understanding of who he truly was. They loved his gifts, but not the life he was calling him to. So they loved the gifts, but not the gift giver. So he explained what it takes to be one of his followers. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough money to complete it. Otherwise, when he has just merely laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not even able to finish his project. Or what king going out to encounter another king in battle will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is even able with 10,000 soldiers to meet him who comes against him with 20,000 soldiers? And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Now, I know that was a lengthy opening. Jesus said a lot in those simple illustrations. He quickly put an end to the idea that he offered some kind of a welfare program. Although the gift of eternal life is free to anyone who asks, as stated in John 3, 16, the asking requires a transfer of ownership. Counting the cost means recognizing and agreeing to some of the terms first, or agreeing to some terms first. In following Jesus, we cannot simply follow our own inclinations, our own desires, our own motives. We cannot follow him and the world's way at the same time. Following Jesus may mean that we lose relationships, we miss out on our dreams, our goals, material things, and even our own lives. Those who are following Jesus simply for what they can get won't stick around when the going gets tough. When God's way conflicts with our way, we feel, or we will feel, betrayed by the shallow me-first faith we have bought into. If we have not counted the cost of being his child, we will turn away at the threat of sacrifice and find something else to gratify our selfish desires. In Jesus' earthly ministry, there came a time when the free food stopped and public opinion turned ugly. The cheering crowds became jeering crowds, and Jesus knew ahead of time what would happen. Now, let me pause there. Today's Christianity is, especially American Christianity, looks very different than the Bible's account or the gospel of Scripture. Today, people are told, 
come to Jesus if they want a better life. Have your best life now. People are sold a bag of goods when it comes to the gospel. Stating that just change your mind, come to Jesus, and he will make everything better for you. When Jesus said, coming to him is going to cost you a lot. And in fact, you're going to go through trials and troubles and persecutions just because you are his follower. Don't get me wrong, when you give your life to Christ, things get better, especially in an eternal sense. What's better than eternity, right? Than knowing that you're going to have eternal life in heaven. But to come to Jesus because you're expecting him to fill your bank account or to fulfill all of your wanton desires of your heart and that he is just going to be a genie in a lamp and he's going to be someone who's there to fulfill all of your wishes and all of your desires, you're going to be let down. You are going to be in for one big bumpy ride. And I fear that the gospel that is being presented to people nowadays is a feel-good, carnal, fleshly message where it's not about coming to saving faith because you are spiritually dead and bankrupt. Because scripture says, while you were yet dead in your sins, Christ died for you. But let me continue on. Jesus ended his description of the cost of discipleship with a breathtaking statement. Any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Renouncing may mean that we give up something physically, but more often it means we let go emotionally so that we possess no longer possesses us. So let me say that again. More often it means that we let go emotionally so that we possess no longer possesses us. When we become one of his, we cannot continue to belong to the world. We must make a choice for we cannot serve both God and money, or God and the world, or God and ourself. The rich young ruler, when confronted with that choice, turned his back on Jesus. Suppose you learned that you had been given an all-expense-paid condo on a beach in Tahiti, complete with airfare, a car, food, and a maid. You could brag about your new lifestyle, plan for it, and dream about it. But until you pack up and leave your current home, the new life is never really yours. You cannot live in Tahiti and your current hometown at the same time. Many people approach Christianity the same way, especially here in America. They love the idea of eternal life, escaping hell and having Jesus at their beck and call. But they are not willing to leave the life they now live. And that's the issue. Their desires, lifestyle, and sinful habits are too precious to them to just merely let it go. Their lives may exhibit a token of change, starting to attend church or giving up a major sin, but they want to retain ownership of everything else. Jesus is speaking in Luke 14 to those with that mindset. If you want to retain ownership of your life, you are going to lose it. But if you seek to lose your life, you will gain it. If you transfer over ownership of your life completely to Jesus, you are going to save your life. But if you don't, you are going to lose it because you cannot serve God and yourself at the same time. It is one or the other. We cannot earn salvation by lifestyle change or any other good deed according to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. But when we choose to follow Jesus, we are releasing control of our lives. When Jesus is in control, pure living results happen. In Jesus' parable of the sower, it was only the soil that allowed the seed to put down roots and bear fruit that was called good. If we are going to be disciples of Christ, we must first count the cost of following him. This has been the Gospel Truth Ministry. My name is Rob Glass. Again, please click like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you get these videos as they are dropping. So, one final thing.
if you proclaim to be a follower of the Lord Jesus, of our Lord Jesus, please consider the cost of what it means to follow after him. Are you willing to lay yourself aside and take up your cross and move in the way of Jesus? Are you willing to live a sacrificial life, a life of obedience to the word of God? And are you ready to live out that word and do what it commands, do what it says? If you are willing to do that, forsake yourself and pick up the word of God and follow after the ways of Christ, then you are truly not only counting the cost, but living it as well. Until next time, may God richly bless you.